The next fermented beverage we'll make is the infamous kombucha. Kombucha originated from China where it's been consumed for over 2,000 years. It's simple really, all it is is a blend of tea, black or green, some organic cane sugar, your self-propagating culture, which we call a SCOBY. It's an acronym for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast, and a cup of previously made kombucha. The SCOBY will help you start the fermentation process, and as I talked about before, it will reproduce itself, so each time you'll have another one that you can use to make another batch or share it with a friend. The microbial community in kombucha is determined by a number of things. The composition of the SCOBY will vary from country to country, and the end product will also vary based on the growth conditions. Nevertheless, there's always core bacteria and yeast present, which are two Acetobacter and one yeast Zygosaccharomyces. Of the Acetobacter, Camogotibacter is the most prevalent. It's known to produce microbial cellulose, which gives the SCOBY its physical structure. Camogotibacter is known also for breaking down resistant fibers, which produces short-chain fatty acids. It's these fatty acids that offer us this usable form of energy and has many benefits for metabolic activity. Another species of Acetobacter found in kombucha is Gluconacetobacter. Gluconacetobacter creates glucaric acid, which is known for its detoxifying properties. Glucaric acid binds toxins in the stomach and removes them through the urine. This important process rids our body of unwanted hormones and environmental toxins, supporting the detoxification process of our major organ system. The most predominant species of yeast in kombucha is Zygrosaccharomyces. It is with this yeast, among others, that the sucrose is inverted into ethanol. The ethanol is then converted into acetic acid with the help of Acetobacter, and it's the consumption of this acetic acid that we gain many health benefits from its alkalizing properties. It not only increases the flow of gastric juices in the stomach, it also combats acidity. Studies have shown that balancing the pH has been able to be helpful in reducing chronic diseases and ailments. In the body, acetic acid is able to reduce inflammation, lower blood pressure, and balance blood sugar. All, all three of these are very important factors in optimal health. According to research, kombucha has many properties which are known to prevent a broad spectrum of metabolic and cardiovascular diseases. This fermented beverage has been shown to stimulate the immune system, reduce inflammation, and support digestive function. So while kombucha, a lot of the health benefits come from the green or black tea, once it undergoes the fermentation process, it's also these other products that weren't there prior, like the acetic acid and glucaric acid and the probiotics that are able to offer many other benefits. Making a homebrew kombucha doesn't just mean you get to save some money, you also get to enjoy the whole process. So we'll start by gathering everything we'll need, which is a one gallon glass sterilized jar and a cloth and rubber band to cover it. You'll need some black or green tea, four tablespoons. You'll need one cup of organic cane sugar and a cup of kombucha starter. You'll also need your self-propagating starter, the SCOBY. We'll have a pitcher to help us pour our brewed tea and a strainer to strain out the tea. We'll need a glass jar to reserve the SCOBY when you're done, a couple glass bottling jars, and I have a little funnel and strainer for when I bottle. By now, you can already guess, our first step is going to be to sanitize and sterilize our surface and equipment. 
So while using hot soap and water is all fine and good, it's best to consider perhaps using a solution that you can get from a home brew supply store or a really simple solution you can make is made with a tablespoon of bleach and a gallon of water. What you do in that case is you can soak, for example, your jar for 20 minutes in the solution and then rinse with boiled water when you're done and that will kill any unwanted organisms. Once everything is sanitized, we'll then start by making our tea. The first thing we'll do is boil approximately two quarts of water. Once the water is boiling, we can add a cup of our organic cane sugar and let that dissolve completely. Once the sugar is dissolved, we'll then add four tablespoons of black or green tea. Here I have a black and rose petal tea that I've made. So I really like to make blends, which you can definitely do. I recommend doing dried berries or flowers. You can use hibiscus or calendula with a green tea and you'll get all of those extra benefits in your kombucha from those herbs. Once you add the tea to the boiling water, turn off the burner, cover the pot, and let it steep for 10 to 15 minutes before you strain the tea mixture into your pitcher. Allow your brew to cool until it's tepid so you don't destroy your scoby with the heat. Once it's cooled, I usually put my pitcher in the fridge for about an hour to help that process speed along. But once it's cooled, we'll go ahead and pour it into your glass jar. And then we'll add the remaining two quarts of filtered water to your jar. So why do we add filtered water and not tap water? Well, as I mentioned before, filtered water usually contains chlorine and sometimes even fluoride. Both of these two chemicals inhibits beneficial bacteria growth. And that can be said even for drinking tap water. If you're trying to repopulate your gut microbiome, it can absolutely give you issues, the chlorine from tap water. So once we have that filled with our water, we'll go ahead and add one cup of our kombucha starter. And then we'll add our rock star, the SCOBY. Just carefully drop it in. Okay, now it's good to go. All we have to do is put a clean cloth on top or paper towel. It's your choice. Secure it with a rubber band and we'll set it out of direct sunlight in an area with proper airflow. So the money question is, how long do we want to ferment our kombucha for, right? Well, this is one that I made one week ago. I made it with green tea instead of black tea, so that's why the color is a little bit different. But basically, my rule of thumb is 10 days. If it's warm, I'd try it at seven days. And if it's a cold month, two weeks even might be a good number. So you just want to give it a taste and see where it's at. But 10 days is a good number on average. Once I'm done with everything, I always like to make a few notes in my phone. I will write down anything from the type of tea I used, if it was particularly hot or humid, if that time I used iodine for my sterilization, anything that you might want to refer to in the end if you have a really good kombucha or maybe something went wrong, you can look back at your notes and see, okay, why did, why did this one turn out so great? If you want to go the extra mile, sometimes I'll cold crash my booch, which basically means you'll take your kombucha when it's done fermenting, put a tight fitting lid on it, and stick it in your fridge for 24 hours. This process allows the kombucha to cool down and all of the yeast and other sediments will group together and sink to the bottom of your kombucha. Basically what this does is creates a more clear end product and it's a little bit tastier as well. When we're ready to start bottling, we'll go ahead and remove the cloth cover. And with very clean hands, we will 
Scoop out the SCOBYs and put them in a sterilized jar for storage. We'll also add one cup of kombucha to this for storage that you'll also use when you make your next batch of kombucha as your starter. All right, so I'll slowly pour this kombucha through a strainer into a clean glass pitcher. And using a funnel and strainer, I will begin to bottle. I always use a strainer just because sometimes there's sediments in your kombucha that aren't necessarily the most pleasant things to drink. So we'll fill our bottles close to the top, leaving a quarter to a half inch of headspace, followed by one teaspoon of organic cane sugar for the second fermentation process, or you can omit the sugar and use one tablespoon of fruit puree. As I mentioned before, we'll store our SCOBY with some kombucha starter in the fridge with a tight-fitting lid, and it, it will last a couple weeks, but like I said as well, I make a batch once a week. And then we'll begin our second fermentation process with our bottles. So that's when after we added our sugar and left some headspace, all of the carbonation will form. We'll just store these anywhere in our kitchen for approximately a week, but keep your eye on bubble formation. If it's warm, it might just take a day or two and then we'll move these into the fridge where we'll let it cool for 24 hours before we open it up and enjoy it.